very good morning to all of you i abhishek sharma working as assistant professor in briani group of colleges today i am going to describe one of the major topic of the plant tissue culture biology it is termed as the soma clonal variations in our last topic we have discussed about what is the plant tissue culture technique and how it is useful for the mankind in the series of that we are now going to describe the effect of the plant tissue culture techniques that we can utilize for the beneficial of mankind likewise this is one of the major technique the soma clonal variations as the name defines the meaning of soma clonal soma means the somatic cells clones means the generation the somatic cells of plants when treated with some mutants or with chemicals or with other agents so that the variations can be arrived or can be achieved at the genetic levels and these genetic variations can be transferred to the inheritance uh, clones of this when uh, inheritance uh, clones of the plants when these situations arrives the whole process is called as the soma clonal variations majorly this kind of work is done to achieve some of the beneficial properties of plants like the disease resistance like to improve the nutritional quality of the plant like to provide the stress resistance against the abiotic like salt treatments like cold treatments like uh, chemical treatments also against the biological stresses like the infection of insects and infections of fungus bacteria and other things so start with in 1981 two scientists larkin and the scowcroft defined the term soma clonal variations and said that the genetic variations are the essential component of any breeding programs because the in natural process when we do the plant biotechnology we induces the variations through the different breeding programs and by these various various breeding programs we induces the different variations at the field levels that can be inherited to their clones or their next generation and we to utilize these next generation for our beneficial so the genetic variations are the essential component of any breeding program that is designed to improve the characteristics of any crop plant here the characteristics means that the properties that we want to increase or we want to improve like again the same the nutritional quality the resistance against the disease uh, field quality or the yield improvements etc now we will discuss how the soma clonal variations are achieved inside the growing plants basically the soma clonal variations are developed inside any plant by two means first is by utilizing the in vitro cell culture technique and second is using the normal field breeding technique in both the techniques the slight part of in vitro culture technique is involved and therefore the variations are arrived through the plant tissue culture cycles inside the ex plant that is the any part of crop that is used to provide or to improve the quality of the plant through plant tissue culture therefore what is plant cycle the plant tissue culture cycle is a process that involves establishment of a differentiated cell tissue culture under defined conditions of proliferation for a number of generation and subsequent regenerations of the plant that means the plant tissue culture cycle is a process that establish a cell and tissue under in vitro conditions where the variations can be achieved inside a soma clonal uh, tissue and then these variations can be transferred on inheritance in their future generations those are called as the regenerants of these plants now how these soma clonal variations are produced inside the plant or inside the uh, ex plant there are basically two hypotheses behind that how the soma clonal variations arrives inside the plant the first 
hypothesis said that there are some genetic disorders in few cells of the expand as we know that the expand is made up of thousands of billions of cells it may possible that a uh, one cell two cell or a group of cells may have some genetic disorders and due to these genetic disorders when these cells grows they provide some variation in their genetic uh, formation or genetic composition and this genetic compositions provide a special character to that expand that can further processed or further carried out inside the crop plant regenerated from that particular expand whereas the second uh, hypothesis that that the spontaneous mutations can occur inside the growing expand that can produce a uh, nature of particular uh, crop or can provide a special character to the crop these spontaneous mutations can be arrived due to the different conditions of cultures like the ph conditions the impulsions of the hormones the temperature provided to the culture etc etc now the question arises that how these soma clonal variations are arised inside the growing expand or field crop of an any plant there are two hypotheses behind this the first hypothesis said that there may be some genetic disorders in the cells of expand or growing plant inside the breeding fields as we know that the plant or the organs are comprised of thousands or in the millions of the cells it may possible that one two three cells or may a group of cells can have a certain kind of genetic variations in their nucleus and it may possible that from these variations a new type of phenotypic character may arise and it provide an additional character to that crop plant whereas the second hypothesis said that there is a chance of spontaneous mutation inside the growing expand or the crop plants these in spontaneous mutations can be achieved to changing the ph conditions of the media where the expand is going or the chemical uh, treatments like the increase or decrease in the certain kind of plant growth regulators and other conditions like temperatures like time duration of the cell cycle now the big question arises that how the soma clonal variations can be developed inside a plant that can be useful for the mankind there are two theories behind that first is without in vitro technique second is the with in vitro technique before starting to this i would like to conclude that both the techniques involve a slight nature of in vitro culture so to start with first of all the without in vitro culture technique the initial portion of this technique may include the use of in vitro culture technique though it is named without in vitro culture but it start with the in vitro culture for this first of all the expand or suitable expand is selected then the callus was developed from this particular expand now the callus is utilized to, to produce the shoot by the organogenesis method that is the shoot induction from the callus and after the induction of shoots the rooting is initiated and the whole plant inside the in vitro laboratory is produced now a numbers of these kind of in vitro plants are produced these plants are now transferred to the field conditions where the extensive field trials was carried out to identify the variations inside the field populations if somehow we found that some of the plants are showing some variations these plants are selected inside the field conditions and can be carried out and can utilize for their breeding programs to find out that if they sustain these variations in their next progeny like f1 f2 f3 and so on if these plants shows that particular variations those are beneficial for mankind as we discussed in terms of resistance resistance to various diseases into the nutritional quality etc then these plants are select select as with having the great agronomic traits and the new varieties is released from the without using the in vitro techniques whereas using the in vitro technique there is a slight uh, elongated uh, procedure where we start with the same expand this expand is treated with some mutagens now the second 
processor with in vitro tightening is slightly elongated processor this, this processor start again with the same expand where the expand is taken inside the in vitro laboratories and over the in vitro cultures where a specific mutant treatment is given to that plant here the mutant treatment means that what kind of certain character we want to apply inside our in vitro plant if we want a resistant plants against a certain toxin then in case we will provide the different doses of that toxin at this stage if we want to get a particular plant having resistance towards the salt or towards the cold stress or towards any heavy metal then we will provide the different concentrations of these chemicals at this particular stages after getting a certain plant that has survived over the maximum concentrations of that particular chemical are further taken out to produce the callus the callus was produced from that particular explant having the maximum resistance towards the chemical these callus were further utilized to produce the callus masses in the huge amount from that particular at this stage again the selection was carried out the same doses those was provided here was again provided to the callus here again the motive of this particular experiment is to check that the variety of that callus developed here is really in actual resistance to the particular chemical that it provided earlier here so the toxin treatment was again provided at this stage and when we confirmed that the that the callus produced here is capable of resistance or showing the resistance towards this toxins or the chemicals is utilized for the second cycle now these callus pieces are utilized to produce the shooting inside the callus that is the organogenesis method so the plant shooting or the direct regeneration from the callus is achieved the shooted plants are again tested that is the first selection here second selection here and third selection here these plants are again util, uh, utilized with the help of same toxins that are provided at first selection second selection and third selection and now again it is checked that these derived plants have the uh, conditions or have the capabilities to sustain in that particular concentration of that toxin so the plants survived here are further taken out as uh, having good agronomic traits and they are utilized further with the help of micro propagations the maximum plants were generated the rooting was induced and the all over the plants generated so this technique was taken out to the field trials where extensive field trials were carried out to check that these variations are capable to transform from one generation to the second generation or to the next generation if the field trials were successful then the again new variety is released these two phenomena provide the basic characteristics to the somaclonal variations plants and this is how we achieve the somaclonal variation inside the laboratory with the help of field trials now we will discuss that there are some factors those affects the somaclonal variations and we will describe these functions in very short the first is the genotype the genotype of any plant species is very specific against the variations so to induce the genetic variations we must keep in mind that the selection of the most suitable genotype is required second is the explant source though each and every cell of plant represent as explant but we have to keep in mind that the best result providing cells like the cells of the meristematic tissues cells of the leaves or the cells of the nodes are can be utilized to produce the maximum varieties of the somaclonal variations second is the duration of the cell cycle the duration of the cell cycle also provides the several effects over how the somaclonal variations can be produced so the duration of the cell cycle should be characterized or should be standardized to get a particular somaclonal variation and at the end the culture conditions this is one of the most major part that how the culture conditions are provided to the plants as i discussed earlier that the temperature that the salt concentration the ph 
and the composition of media composition of PGRs given inside the in vitro culture media can initiate the several impulses that can provide the somatoronal variations can be standardized before to provide uh, or to induce any somatoronal variation inside the expand. And finally, why we do all these lump sum experiment because we want to generate a specific novel variety with special agronomic traits those are helpful or those are required for the benefit of the humankind in terms of uh, nutritional values, in terms of resistance towards diseases or towards stresses and aerobatic stresses and blah blah. So first of all what we want is the production of a novel variety. So this novel variety must include some special characters like disease resistance character to several disease or a particular disease. Second, the abiotic stress against the salt, cold or maybe drop. Third, the biostatic resistance, the biostatic resistance against the insects, bacteria, fungus or any other particular insect. And finally, with improved seed quality. That means if a summer clone variation is developed inside a plant, the seed produced must have the improved quality so that the traits can be transferred to the further generations. So this is all our summer clone variation is and how we induce the summer clone variation, what factors affect it and what are the advantages. Thank you for listening to me. Please do subscribe our channel, like and share the comments. Thank you.